Hey, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Angular Air. I am Justin, your host. And on today's episode, we are going to be taking a second look at Scully. Uh, so it should be pretty interesting. We had a previous episode on that, kind of an introduction to it. So we're going to do more of a deep dive into it and learn some more about it. Looking forward to it. So let's say hi to our panelists, then we'll meet our guest and we'll get into the content. Joining us with today, we've got Alyssa. Alyssa, what's going on? So excited to be here. Excited <laughs> to have you. Mike's with us. Mike, how's it going? Uh, not too bad. Sorry, I got a little distracted. I was looking at the picture that Alyssa just tweeted out and uh, yeah, I think it came out well. <laughs> it was a tremendous song, Mike. It was a tremendous song. It was. I really belted it out. Yeah. yeah. If yeah, I sing it again, I'll be sure to mute myself. <laughs> <laughs> So what Mike's referring to uh, out on Twitter, right? In the Twitters, we got a, a screenshot. So check that out because I think he's doing something crazy, as always, as always. All right, our guest today joining us. Uh, once again, we've had you on several times. We always love having you on. Sander, how's it going? It's going well, thank you. It's nice to be here again. Hello. Oh, yeah, we need to wave on this thing. Always, uh, yeah. <laughs> right, right. right. Yeah, otherwise people will not recognize me. Right. Um, sure. How are things going for you? Uh, what's well, going on? actually, things are going very well for me. I'm full time working on Scully now uh, for a while, and things are really coming together now. We are going to, uh, we said it before, but we are really, really close to beta now. The code is ready, the code is stable. Uh, all we need to do is documentation, and documentation turns out to be even more work than code. So that, that is what is holding us back. We need to touch up the schematics a little bit, nothing crazy. Um, so uh, if you want to use it, it's stable enough. You can use it. The documentation is a little bit behind of what we can do. I will show a little of it later on. Feel free to link to the video on YouTube from this show uh, in the docs as well, showing off uh, some of the capabilities. Yeah, yeah. I think there is a link to the video. So are you not allowed to go into beta without docs? Is that like a, a rule that I <laughs> nobody yeah, told me? Yeah, that, that, that's a hard rule we have been setting for ourselves mostly. Because if we don't get the docs out, uh, I will, will be working support 24-7. Yeah, um, that makes sense. Okay. Now, when you put it that way, I just didn't know if there was like some unspoken rule in the community about you know it, it should be a hard rule on any project really but if that would be enforced nothing would ever show i don't know about you but i remember the first angular docs they were pretty good wait is that sarcasm no <laughs> okay no that's my shirt angular, docs, like angular js docs right yeah, yeah. The, the first version of the Angular JS docs. Oh, okay. I got you. I'm with you. Well, uh, I, I think we need a clarification point. I know it, you can only see that it says sarcasm, but it also says it's how I hug. So, all right, you do okay. you. That's not confusing at all. I can vouch for that. I can vouch for that. <laughs> yeah, it's too bad we cannot experience it in real life nowadays. Right. Right. Hey, so um, maybe give us a quick recap on Scully for people that might be jumping in this as their first episode for Scully, just kind of what it is. They don't know yet? They might not. I mean, maybe the word's not all the way out yet. Some people <laughs> actually have to aren't able to work with uh, pre-release software. So some people may not be able to, in like work environments, may not be able to even use beta, uh, let alone alpha software. So And some people just kind of quit twitter and all social media so you know they might not have heard of anything so <laughs> <laughs> uh, well um scully is a, a static site generator for your angular applications so basically we take your angular application um we apply a tool to it and out rolls a boatload of index.html files that you can uh, put on a server and and host uh, on a cdn or something um, and you don't need 
any servers anymore. No development servers, no database servers at all. That's a possibility. You, you can go in all layers in between. Uh, the nice thing about Scully is you don't have to adapt your Angular application that much. Uh, it basically takes your Angular application as it is, including all jQuery plugins and all the, the, the upgrade from AngularJS. If that's still there, it just takes it with it. And when you put it out on the web, it still works. So that is, oh, go ahead. We can think about using this for things like if we're making a blog or maybe have products that we want to display rapidly or, or many other uses, right, for that in terms of static site generation and quick delivery and all well, that. Yeah, it is about quick delivery. It's all also about uh, search engine optimization. So certainly your entire site is accessible to all search engines, not only the Google bot that understands JavaScript, but also all the search engines that don't use any JavaScript. Um, and it makes the first boot or the first experience from the user much faster as it is with, with Angular because all the content is there from the get-go. But if you want to get the st getting started point, I would say, Look back at the episode with Aaron. He is doing a pretty good introduction and explaining what everything is. He's also pretty good in explaining what the gem stack is and stuff like that. I would like to skip that a little bit and, and dive in a little bit deeper. So uh, let's clarify one thing uh, for people who, again, may not be familiar or who have heard of it and aren't 100% positive on this point. So we're talking about rendering a, an Angular application at this point. Um, and serving up static content. Yes. So since we're doing that, we're not necessarily executing any JavaScript. But after the initial load, is the JavaScript there? Does it function as an Angular app or does it function as an application that is just statically rendered? Uh, it can be both. Uh, the normal mode of operation is that your Angular app is still there and after the static has finished rendering, your Angular application will boot up and it will be transforming to a normal spa. But uh, there is a community plugin that strips out Angular and that way you can uh, use the entire site without any JavaScript. If you want to have a sample of that, go to our doc site. Our doc site has zero JavaScript in there and it is a full Angular application. That sounds awesome. I love the ability to choose um, how you want the application to uh, behave out in the wild. Yeah, especially for things like documentation and, and things like that are very low in, in changes. Um, if you build a site like that, you strip out the JavaScript, but then you add like a service worker that caches everything. You have like offline documentation in, in a snap. That's awesome. <laughs> now, it comes bundled with Markdown support. Is that correct? It comes with Markdown support. Yeah, yeah, that's like my favorite part of it. <laughs> I'm a big Markdown fan, and, and especially when you talk about writing docs and writing content, it, mm -hmm. it's so great. So the fact that it comes with that, that then you can produce content for it in Markdown, and the engine will handle rendering that into HTML, static site, all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah we are dog feeding there because we write all our documentation in, in Markdown, and basically it is entirely generated by Scully as a couple of static, uh, static files. So the Scully doc site is being pre-rendered and served via Scully? Uh, we are not serving via Scully. That is actually a good question. Well, I'm um, not worrying, but pre-rendering via Scully for... Sorry. We are pre-rendering and then we are taking the static files and in this, uh, we are now uh, running them on Firebase hosting. Yeah, like that. We are stacking them. <laughs> And we are currently hosting them on Firebase, uh, on the static hosting for Firebase. We just deploy to there, and that's how we are we are serving the docs. Uh, why Firebase, would you ask? Well, George had an account, and he know how to do it. And we were <laughs> out of time. That makes me so happy. So, Sandra, tell us. You said you wanted to skip over the basics. So everyone, check out that earlier show if you missed yep. it. Um, what do you want to dive into? What do you want to talk about? Well, I'm going to show a couple of things that Aaron didn't get into, uh, mostly because they weren't that ready a couple of weeks ago, and they are now. 
um, I wanted to show the how to do the without JS stuff. But sadly, I was setting up a demo application and I set it up with Angular 10. Uh, <laughs> and I, finally, uh, it turns out that the the plugin doesn't accept the Angular 10 thing. So I cannot show it without JavaScript, but believe me, it's usually just getting the plugin and it goes away. So I, I might want to share my screen now. Uh, and I need to do that here, share screen. All right, we got it? Yeah, we got it. I got a small application here, which is, which might seem familiar to some of the people. It is just an Angular application with some routes in there. It has a landing page that apparently works. It has an about page that works. And it has a blog page that is working. And this is something, uh, the entire content here is generated from Markdown. If you don't believe me, here is the welcome to Angular page. If I go to the, well, We can just update it, save it, and do a reload. And there is the new markdown. This is something that Ang that uh, Aaron couldn't demonstrate because, like two week uh, two weeks ago, your uh, this is the hosted version of your Angular application with ng serve. Two weeks ago, that wasn't possible because it didn't had a possibility to read the Angular, the markdown in here. So now it does. So if you want to work on the markdown or if you want to work on the layout of the mark of the files, you can do that in ng serve as you're used to. Uh, on the yeah. And did you say so? Now what we're seeing in the browser is it run through Scully already at this point? Um. Partly, yes, it is okay. run through Scully, but then we are. Um, I'm reading the output from Scully back into the Angular JS application, uh, into the Angular application. You will see here there is an error. It's trying to read it from the, and then it says, "Oh, it's not there," and it's going to read it again from the uh, from the Scully server. And it is something that only you see this errors because this is the ng serve and not the final application. And it is a debugging tool. Uh, it reads it again from like a different port for the, from the Scully servers. And it reads it from here. And it passes out the part that is important. So yes, this is partly generated by Scully. Um, if I go to the Scully application, it's not going to work. Here is the same application in the static version. The autos are not there, but the blog is still here. And everything is here. And how do I know that this is a static version? If you go to the network tab. And you look at the preview, you see you have a fully qualified HTML file in here with everything in place. So did you just ng serve and now you have the two uh, actually, servers running? Yeah, I have actually three servers runner. Okay. ng serve is running on the background, ng serve with uh, the dash o. Uh, ng build slash watch is running. 
so that if I change something in in the application, it will rebuild that application so that, and I'm running Scully in watch mode. So if the build uh, cranks out a new build, it will rerun the Angular, the Scully. If I change the block file, it will rerun that part of Scully. So basically everything is updated all the time, which makes development with, with Scully uh, a lot easier and, and nicer to work with. Did you have to manually run all three of those in your terminal? Or is there a builder that Scully has provides that you run the one and it does all those? No, it, for now it's manual. Okay. And this is one of the things we are looking into. Um, we moved Scully to an annex. Uh, repo. We are using Annex for the mono repo of Scully itself. It's not dem demanded for Scully. Um, I'm looking for this. I'm not sure if we are going to make a builder or just a batch script or something to do this. Uh, it, it's a little bit of a shore, and this is something. Some of the things we still need to do, but it's like starting those servers. And usually you don't need all three of them because in most application you just uh, work on your application and when you're done you're running Scully and you're not con constantly like iterating over it. The one exception is when you're working on a blog or something like this and you want to change like the formatting or anything like that, then it's a nice thing to have. But most of the time you are just working on the Angular application and not looking at the uh, output in, in Scully because it is just basically a part in the deployment workflow. It's not part of the daily the daily thing you do. You, you are building in your application, you are adding data and stuff like that. And when you think, OK, I'm ready, you, you do a build with Scully, which is basically a, a kind of, it's a build step, a deployment step. And you might want to do a couple of end-to-end -end tests there to make sure that you are not missing anything special. But um, people are asking about uh, testing for Scully. And yeah, you can test Scully, but I would advise make a couple of end-to-end -end tests that checks the result. If that is there, uh, your application is already tested by the tests in Angular. Adding the, the adding more tests for just testing Scully. If Scully is work, doing what it is supposed to do, I don't think it adds that much value. But it might help some people. Maybe something like because you're defining the routes right that get pre-rendered in, in that sort of scenario. So maybe the thought process would be for my end-to-end -end smoke test for Scully, confirming that the routes I configured ended up as resulting. Yeah, you can load right. as an end-to-end -end test. You can load the routes.json and check if all the routes you are expecting are there. So yes, that is the kind of testing I would do. do indeed, do some smoke test. Look for like, okay, this is a really important page, and I want to make sure this or that is that. Just test those couple of things and trust on the process. Makes sense. Um, there are ways to test this, and uh, jo uh, Orge is going to uh, make a blog or a video about how to do this. Let's see what, what, what did I wanted to show again. Well, I gave away. And the power that it gives virtually any Angular application um, with very little configuration. Yeah, you see, I have like markdown files here. Um, I just copied a bunch of markdown files from the Angular rep repo and a couple of form. Like there is an entire stream here. It has multiple pods, it's deep, and everything is here. I flattened out the structure so it comes in here. And you, I don't have to do anything, it is just HTML. And you can see, you can pretty print coding, whatever you want. And this is just markdown. If you go to the observer, this is this one. What is an observer? Now you can, and, you can select, um, like decide what parts that you want to do this 
to for your app. So you can certainly use this. It's not like an all or nothing thing, right? It's like, hey, I, I have an existing app. I think like these two routes could benefit from this sort of thing for SEO and stuff. Can I just plug in Scully to take care of those situations to get started with? Yes, you can do that. But usually you want to do your whole app because uh, for CEO purposes, you really want to have all pages available. But you don't have to do that. You can go and just take a couple of them. So by default, because um, one of the issues that I've run into with um, rendering TypeScript, so the formatting and the styling there, uh, just by putting the triple tick TS, does that automatically color and prettify the TypeScript for Markdown? Well, um, in here, I'm not using a code formatter. But if you are using a code formatter, and uh, actually Scully ships with um, H highlight JS. OK. And then, yes, it will do the, the formatting for TypeScript. You need to include, if you want to use that, you need to enable it because it's not enabled by default. You can enable it, and you have to include the, the CSS you want. But that's it. I can include yeah. CSS files. That's in my tool set. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably it is. Uh, if you look at, um, if you look at Scully.io, if you look at the docs, um, we have some samples here. This is Bash. And here we have TypeScript. And you see that here is code formatting going on. You might see that. It's I, nice that that's an opt-in sort of thing, right? So like if I use Scully and I didn't want to have a blog and didn't need Markdown, I'm not incurring You're not paying any here. price. No, right. you're not. it's not there. And by the way, there is no JavaScript here. This is all server-side rendered, including the code formatting. So, so that's all built. Scully Engine builds that, puts that into an HTML file, and then that HTML file we deploy to our CMS or somewhere that gets delivered yeah, to the uh, client as soon as they request that. The the big uptick from uh, using only HTML is if you go to the to the lighthouse and you are going to generate a report. You get pretty nice performance. And I don't think you can get better than 100%. <laughs> and the then it's is, not just about the performance, right? Like you mentioned, it's about SEO. And, and when we think about we've got sites that, that render content that we want to allow people to share on social networks and things like that, when they provide that link, that those link scrapers usually show a preview. And when that stuff's rendered client side, that preview won't have that content in a lot of cases. And so this provides us that that those social sharing sites will, will include, you know, a thumbnail, that initial content, the description, that stuff will be provided. We get that out of static site rendering. Yeah, exactly. And this stuff will be there even if your Angular application is boot is booting. But if you don't need the, the Angular application itself, which for a doc site makes sense that you don't need there is nothing there that needs processing once it's done. We love uh, using uh, Angular to build this thing because that makes it a lot easier for us to quickly roll out updates and changes and formatting and do whatever. And then we just strip out Angular and be done with it. And it is a really fast site. Um, and we are still working on some uh, service workers so we can even add a service worker and it having it all cached offline. So you have it completely available. That works for some uh, for some pages. If you have like 50 pages, you can just download everything with the service worker in one go. If you have thousands and thousands of pages, that might not be a good idea. You don't want to put megabytes of data on your client. But if for a small site until uh, yeah, a couple of hundred pages, that is a pretty good option. Because if you look at the size of this thing, this page is 70 key, kilobyte, which is just CSS, um, HTML, and a couple of images. 
So the one thing uh, that I really like about this whole thing is you get incredible power from the performance aspect and you can implement it at least to a base implementation rather quickly. You can yeah. probably get something run uh, up and running within minutes, if not an hour uh, of getting started. But then as you dig deeper, you can expand the implementation to have more customization. So if you have the ability, say on your uh, website, to be able to chat with somebody, you can pre-render selectively portions of the page that would not include the chat, but at runtime, allow that stuff to come into play once the application is bootstrapped up. And yeah, we have me, like- That's remarkable. Yeah, we, we have things like, is Scully running? And then you can say, hey, if Scully is running, I don't want this part of the website, like a uh, live chat, there is no, use in uh, steadily generating a live chat bot or uh, a common session. Al although a common session might be uh, a gray area because if you're only adding comments, you might pre-render what is already there. It, it depends on the on the speed that is, is there. Um, and you can say in Scully, okay, is Scully running? Show this. If Scully is not running, go load the the thing you want. There is another option if you are going to use like uh, a couple of web components and you just load those web components with normal scripts, you can build your Angular application and make them interactive with a couple of small widgets you just sprinkle in them. Um, those widgets might be Angular elements uh, once we have a good way of packaging those things. The problem, the problem with current Angular elements is that uh, they work pretty well but if you want to use just one of two one or two in your page uh packaging those up up so you can uh, deploy them to production is a really manual and hard process okay so you could also think about like if say i had my angular app and it produced a page that had like product content. And then inside of that had a checkout process for a specific customer, right? Oh, no, we lost. Oh no, lost <laughs> you scared him away. I did. All right, I'm gonna wait for a second until he comes back before I ask my question. Let me see if I can get a hold of him. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, how's the weather going for you guys? <laughs> it's outside, which is good because that's <laughs> so long. It uh, it's, been, it's been gorgeous here. It's been in the seventies, and it's good because school's out now, and the kids can play outside. Oh, nice, digging that. So, Justin, I understand that you were prepared to continue the demonstration today. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let me just fire up the <laughs> scrolling show that I had here. No, I'll uh, I'll kind of mention what I was going to ask, and then we can uh, get back into it. Yeah, we could definitely discuss and then get confirmation. Yeah, or, or objections from Sander, or even when he comes back. Right. <laughs> right. Where is saying it's cold where he is, and he's in the chat. Giving out answers right and left about the Scully. Nice, nice. Yeah, so what I'm wondering is, like, if I have a site in my Angular application and uh, I it displays some product information, some just general product content, and then inside of it, it has a section where it's going to take a, a specific customer, the customer is coming through a checkout process that's unique for them, right? Like, could I utilize Scully to pre-render that shell of the product information, which is just common across the board, and then dynamically bring in, have Angular fire up and and bring in that almost like a, you know, like a sub route, right, sort of thing. Mm. And talk a little bit about the elements and, and and using that, you know, code to check to see if Scholar is running, but could we also do it from just a basic like route configuration where that's a sub route with a router outlet, right? Maybe Mike, you know, I don't know. Um, I think we got into that a little bit when we talked with Frosty, and I apologize because I know we talked to him multiple times about Scully. 
uh, some on Angular Air, but we also did an NGBS with him as well. Um, so I don't remember where we had that conversation, but I remember getting into the idea that Scully provides some Angular pieces. I think it's an Angular module or multiple modules to be able to introduce Scully logic to be part of the application. So your idea of a shopping cart, which you really have no knowledge of, especially because it's different for every user at build time, but basically say, hey, this portion of the application, whether or not it's this component, this route, depending upon how you implement that or when you would want that information, that mm -hmm. it would determine whether or not that markup is rendered at build time or not, or if it's only at runtime. Hey, Sander. Did hey. you guys see what Jorge said? He said you can pre-render all of the product and wait after Angular loads for the show checkout or add cart. Yeah, cool. that, that is entirely possible. So, I'm, so I'm sorry, there was a thunderstruck here and my connection went. No. <laughs> my computer hung also, so I needed to reboot and So can you reconnect. talk a little bit about what Scully offers uh, Angular developers to use within the Angular ecosystem in their application to dynamically change what gets rendered and when? Talk about like the the ng modules that get provided from um, Scully. Well, we have a, a small library for Angular uh, users. Um, we that the mod, uh, the library offers a couple of things. Um, we are using the Zone JS uh, to monitor if your application is ready, and if it's ready, we are going to scrape the page. But sometimes uh, we cannot say if, for example, you are using Firebase. Um, Firebase will keep the connections open, so it will never reach a stable point in time. We don't know. We cannot see because all the, the connections keep open. The, the observables are not are not ready, so we don't know. For that, we have like a, a manual idle thing, so you can fire off that your application is ready. Sometimes you need to work with that if you are using Firebase is one case. Um, but there are other things. If you are getting your data some uh, some way in that uh, isn't recognized by by Zone.js, and that happens if you're using WebSockets or if you're using server push or if, if you're using. There are a couple of things that Angular doesn't know about. Uh, then we have no idea if your application is ready. The the other thing is that is in there. I'm going to open my editor because it's nice that everything is closed right now. Let's see. The demo gods have provided you with a uh, computer crash. <laughs> yeah, thunderstruck. Even I, I got thunderstruck. <laughs> what what are the chances? I uh, I love Ironically. that you say thunderstruck. That is such a I I've yeah. never heard of that term because I I struck by lightning. I've heard, but thunderstruck. I'm gonna use that. I like it. I like it better. <laughs> it's also an awesome song. Oh, is it a song? Darn it! You know thunderstruck. <laughs> no. <laughs> yes. No, I've never heard of it. I'm gonna Google yes. this. <laughs> I, I I'm pretty sure husband. Ironically, we were talking about weather while you were uh, rebooting. Yeah, it's uh, it's ironic weather, though. So Matthew in the chat asked, what does application ready mean? Like, how would you understand the concept of my application is ready to know when to call that? Is there kind of a general um, concept that we can? I can go into the general concept because actually Angular doesn't know. The thing is, Angular has no clue when your application is ready. It's just going into idle mode, but it doesn't notify you that, hey, I'm done. Whatever you need to do, go do that. There is no such thing. So I needed to build something like that. Uh, what I did, I hooked into the zone JS, and I'm looking um, for the outgoing uh, HTTP requests. Not only HTTP requests, but outgoing requests. Um, when all outgoing requests are done, I'm going to wait like one, two event cycles, so Angular can stabilize. And then I'm saying, okay, scrape. 
uh, scrape is perhaps not so the correct term, but it's kind of like saying predicting that hey, my application is going to run things on its own with its own intelligence, and then once it's it's done doing whatever it needs to do, and we're at a point where we we feel like we're waiting for the user to tell something to do, then that's the point at which we say hey, our application is ready to go, right? Yeah, and basically, when there is no make that happen. Yeah, basically when there is no outstanding data anymore because some applications are never ready. If you have like a stock ticker that will keep on updating, so that is never going to be ready. So you need really need manual idle there and you need to do is scully running to mark out some of the parts because a stock ticker is not going to be uh, a good application for static site hosting. Um, but some so of then, the things are. So yeah. then, at our, at our point, as a developer, if we need to know that, hey, we need to manually tell it, then it's up to us to kind of decide what is the business logic and rules around that, what would dictate that the application is kind of ready to go for a user to start using it and then determine where to put that code in at, right? Maybe it's after yeah. a first tick for the stock ticker, or maybe it's you know everything before we load the stock ticker, whatever that may be. Your business I, I will make it, make it a little bit simpler. If you're using like customers and you have a, a customer display page, uh, say you're getting your customers from Firebase, so you know when, your cust when you get your data in for your customer in your application, you know that. And that's the point that you say, hey, okay, um, I'm going to call, uh, I think it's called Scully, Scully Manual Fire Ready Go. It's long. <laughs> um, I can look it up. That's, that's the thing you call and then it knows, okay, I'm ready and it will scrape the page. It will uh, take the basic HTML then call all of the post renderers because that's only part of the story scraping. Uh, we can enrich your application with, with whatever you want via the plugin system and put in like extra things or extract things for, for example, an RSS feed or a sitemap. All those things become possible. And when you're talking about this, like the scraping, the generation of these files, what we're kind of referring to is the fact that we have our Angular app, and when we, you run the Scully build, it's going to run that app in a browser, and then Scully's going to see the rendered output, yeah. scrape that, like you're mentioning, and build the files that it's going to be able to deliver of the, the pre-rendered stuff, right? And so that step has to happen for Scully to know what to package into the HTML it's going to deliver. And you need exactly. to run our app because it has dynamic data and things that it needs to pull in or whatnot, right? To to build that. I see. Yeah, and we and we are using Puppeteer uh, for that because um, we have been looking at Universal, and Universal is really really nice, but there is one problem: it is really hard to write a functioning app for Universal. Um, that is the reason we we stepped away from Universal because my first intention was building this thing around Universal. Um, and that didn't pan out. It, it works if you have a good application that is only Angular and there are no third party plugins and there is nothing, everything is like 100% perfect. Go for Angular Universal. Um, and actually we will build an Angular Universal renderer later on. That is one of the things that is going mid to long term, not long term, but mid term, that there is going to be an Angular Universal renderer. Uh, that means that if you say, hey, this is too slow for us, OK, build your application for Angular Universal, and we can use Angular Universal, and we will be just as fast, perhaps even faster than Angular Universal. And we can do a couple of things that Angular Universal cannot do, like finding all the routes, um, doing the post renderers, the, the extra renderers that are not possible, the markdown uh, inclusion is not possible, and and things like that are not available for, for Universal. And I'm still looking at... The Yeah, so what other new stuff 
the latest stuff with with Scully. It's out now. I mean, he showed some of that stuff with the ability to work locally. Yeah, the the, the, the work the the fully working uh, markdown in in your Angular application is pretty new. Um, one of the other things that is well, basically, we are solidifying the whole thing, so it is be becoming more stable. Um, we added a couple of plugins. Um, we have like uh, a plugin that uh, optimizes for SEO, which basically means uh, if you have links in your application, Angular will strip out the trailing slash everywhere. So if you click on a link uh, on a href, not on a router link, but if you click on a href, there is no trailing slash. If you click that, it goes to the server. The server says, no, don't know. Go, uh, here is a 304. You get a redirect and then to the same route with a slash, which is an extra round trip to the server. Uh, we have a, a plugin that adds that slash, which saves a round trip to the server. And also, that is an uptick for SEO. Um, in the SEO plugin, we have a couple of other things that are improving the SEO experience, like the training slashes. Um, cool. We do have a lot of questions kind of going back and forth in the chat about um, the thought process of, is this something that we want to do static site for large applications? Um, how does it fit, you know, or is there a concern around that? Lots of pages, you know, that sort of thing, like. Um, oh, there is, uh, that is another new thing I added. Uh, you can render a single route now, if you want. You can go to the command line uh, use a wildcard or a couple of wildcards separated by a comma, and it will only generate uh, the things that are for that wildcard. Is that at this point only wildcard based, or can you apply other logic to determine what to pre render or what, what you want to render? Right now, it's only wildcards. Um, I'm working on a couple of other things that I cannot just go public about. Uh, there will be a lot of improvement there. We will have a, a working setup where we can just render what you need and on demand using webhooks um, or other means of communication. So if you're, if you're somebody that blogs, say, every 15 minutes and you have thousands of blog posts, like maybe, say, Alyssa, then you potentially could have like thousands upon thousands and only necessarily potentially just render the ones that are new or have changed. Yes, that is entirely possible already by manual doing that, but we are stepping up and going to automate parts of that too. Um, we are not yet sure where that is going to land, but it is uh, in the whole set of a scully, this is a possibility and we will provide something for that. Well, on behalf of AlyssaMichael.com, thank you. <laughs> you're, you're welcome. I was thinking about <laughs> Alyssa's blog when, when I was writing this. You crack, you crack me up, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> no, there really was some hot debate about large apps, so I'm glad you... Yeah, you can... <laughs> um, I'm now working with a client that has applications that are like uh, the, the biggest client of the client has 18,000 pages. OK, if you need to generate all 18,000, that is going to take an hour or an hour and a half, depending on the system you're using. But it is going to crank around. And after that, you just make sure you hook it into your CMS system or whatever, how you have set it up, and render only the routes that have changes. If it's like a product thing, you can set up a listener on your server that says, hey, this product has an update, and do some smart things and call the product, the pages that has have that product inside it. The whole thing there is depending on the client, and we cannot automate that away, because if you update one product, it might be just one page you need to update. But if, the pay, if that product is displayed in 1,000 pages, you might need to update those 1,000 pages. Yeah, it's funny. That's exactly what Matthew just said. So, in the chat. so there's also seems like maybe some confusion around or, or need more information around like, it, would there be cases where we would 
need to use Scully and Angular Universal to solve something? Or is it something like you could it'd be one or the other sort of thing? Well, if you have a site that is really that big, um, we might still advise you to go for the Angular Universal uh, thing, but inside Scully. So, because that will speed up the process tremendously. Um, it's simple. We don't have to start a browser. We don't have to navigate to the page. We don't have to scrape. Yeah, we have to scrape, but it is a little bit easier to just read a string out of the universal part as it is to get everything from an external browser. And I guess there's really like two parts there, right? There's the server side rendering, then there's the pre rendering. And so I guess also thinking about that in the equation of like what you're trying to accomplish, right? Like, do you need something I, out there on a server to pre-render when it's requested? Or do you need it at your local build time where you're building it and now you're shipping it to a CMS, right? It, it really depends on your use case. If you have a highly dynamic site with a high rate of changes, like if you are even blogging more than, than Alyssa and doing like 10 blocks a minute, you, you might want to do uh yeah really really fast like a whole team of hundreds of hundreds that are pushing out to a single block then you might want to use something else than a static uh, site generator that is going to be a problem with most of them but if you are if you are if it's somewhat static and you're not changing all of your pages all, all the days uh, a static site generator will help you a lot And even if you are changing all your pages once a day, you might say, hey, at one o'clock, I'm going to run a new, a new version of the site with the changes of today. Or you might choose to do that twice a day, just run it and deploy the, the updates. There are tools available that just look at a folder structure and say, hey, this file has changed, this file has changed, this file has changed, and push it to your, to your servers. There are available tools already for that. So we are not going to build that because there is no use in reinventing the wheel. Exactly, your power more. creating the HTML yeah. at build time. Yeah, with with the application still bootstrapping, if you so choose, not so much about the deployment aspects of it. No, we are not going to work on the deployment thing. Um, yeah. We might do that in the, in the future, and we might deliver some tooling for that, but that is going to be uh, outside of the scope of Scully itself and, and probably being some edit tools or services that we are going to provide. So. And so other than like the when my application is ready type of code that I might need to add, right? Or say, you know, leveraging the, the markdown support that, that Scully provides. Other than that, would we be able to have teams that think about like, Hey, you're, this team just focused on building the Angular app, and then this other team can be focused on how it gets built and deployed in terms of, um, you know, static site rendering and pre-rendering. So that then the team that's working on the app doesn't really have to wrap their mind around that sort of thing. Or is there I, some more? I would not that? advise that because if you are going to embrace static site generation, you should embrace it in your application. Um, we uh, we didn't touch it yet, but we have things like transfer state, which basically means we are going to uh, take the communication with your backend uh, away and replace it with some static files into into the HTML folder, which we have. Um, ah, everything is closed. <laughs> so the idea of transfer state, like the idea of all right, I make an HTTP request. And the data that I'm based off of can be used both both at build time and at runtime. Correct. Um, well, we use the at build time. We are going to your own to your API. Yes. Or and database then, or whatever you or database or wherever you are getting your data it files on your on your hard drive, like your your C your C drive where you if all your block files and your assets and your your pictures. Mm -hmm. Um. And during uh, during the Scully render, we will embed this information into the HTML file. And we not only embed it into the HTML file so that it is ready when the application starts, 
We also separate out to a data.json. Uh, so all your data will be available on the static site, on the, on the edge of the, of the caching. So you may not necessarily, when you make the request to get that data at runtime, not at build time, it potentially could use the data that was used at build time just by requesting a static JSON file. So no server load, no database calls, no other exactly. API calls. So it is just going to your, to your static site host and it reads it from there. And you basically don't have to do anything because we took, took care of all the, the hard work there. And uh, if you're navigating your site, uh, our transfer state service will even go fetch it from the other pages that are where it's embedded. Well, thank you for doing that for us, Sander. You're welcome. I hate doing do work like that. So if I don't like it, I assume others don't like it. So we fix it. So like in that scenario, as we're building, as the team that's building the application would need to have some understanding of how they would incorporate using that, Ren, is that what you're saying, right? Yeah, I can show that. Um, I have to, okay, I'm going to share my editor there because I have a sample of that in my um, share screen. Share screen. This is the same application I was demoing later on. I'm going to the demo. Um, I'm going to the static host. And you remember the authors there. Hey. You see. Welcome to another episode of Angular Air. I am your host, Justin Schwarzenberg. <laughs> what is going on there? My bad. Somebody, somebody played started. the video. Somebody, <laughs> somebody's watching Justin do his thing. <laughs> I wanted to be proactive, so I'm going to grab the links from the previous Angular Air episode about Scully and the two streams. <laughs> yes, I'll provide them to everyone in case they want to go get other context about Scully. Cool. I opened the authors file and the data.json that we generated for you. And you can see the authors information is here. And this will be deployed to your static file hosting and it will get read from there. And I didn't do the other part yet. But if you have like multiple ones, the data will be there for every route. And that is how it's work. And it's also embedded in the index here you see the generated file it has all the styling there but it has also the data in there it's here let me format this thing you can see the authors are available here in my in one really long script line it's embedded in the html why is it embedded in the html because this way it's available sync. And that means it's available before the Angular application starts. So um, I, I think you, uh, you know if Angular starts, it wipes out whatever is there and it replaces it with Angular. Um, if the data is not ready at that point, you will see a big flash because Angular is erasing anything, it gets the data and then it's rebuilding anything. If the data is already there, um, it will do the same thing, but it will do it in one cycle of the event of the event loop. So you don't, uh, the flash is there, but you probably won't see it. It's going to be very fast unless you disable the JavaScript and there will be no flash because there is no JavaScript, which is an awesome option to have. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we're hitting the top of the hour, so uh, time to wrap it up. Let's um, do some picks if, if any of our panelists have picks, and I'll also ask our guests, and then we'll just call it a show. Um, <laughs> panelists, do we have any picks today? Uh, I'm headed over to twitch.tv slash code it live after this to play around with some UI for a couple hours. So if you're bored, come on over and hang out with me. Um, yeah, that's my pick. 
I have yeah. one, which is basically a tweet, which I found hilarious, and I want to have a suit like that. Uh, and let's see if I can find it back because that is also gone. Yep. While you're looking, uh, my tweet would be, or uh, my tweet, <laughs> you have a tweet, my pick would be our other content on Scully. I think there's a lot more that uh, we've previously talked about that the, some people may not have seen or been aware of with Scully. Uh, so go check those out. Um, I posted the them in chat, and Justin has said he will include those in the video description as well. I'm on the hook. All right, I'll make sure it gets done. <laughs> oh, I see that there is a question about Scully working with Ionic. Um, not yet. We are working with the Ionic team to, to get this fixed. Um, we can get it fixed because it is working with uh, with Universal too. But we need to make a couple of uh, special special adaptions for that because uh, Angular um, Ionic is using Shadow DOM, and rendering Shadow DOM by scraping is kind of hard. So we need to tell Ionic to not use Shadow DOM. And that's basically the thing we have to do and a couple of other things. Um, it's not there because uh, time restrictions. It, it is not something we are not ever going to support, but it will take a couple of more weeks before we are ready to implement it. And are you, uh, is Scully Project accepting like PRs and contributions from the community? We are. We are looking forward to all PRs and, and attributions. If someone wants to write documentation and is really good at writing documentation, please talk to me. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. All right. All right. Well, hey, Sander, thanks again uh, for sharing well, your time coming on, uh, sharing this content with us. Always a pleasure to have you on, and, and we always really appreciate you sharing your time. So thank you. Okay. I had a lot of fun. So thank you for having me. And I'm looking forward to the next time. And I hope the next time I will be not thunderstruck. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> and be available like the whole show. Well, you deal, dealt with it well, and it was fun. So um, <laughs> definitely awesome. All right. Thanks again. Thanks, everyone. Catch you next time. See, See you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>